Hello and welcome to chapter 7.3. Today we're going to look at part 1 of multivariable linear systems. If you think back to section 2, uh, or 7.2, we looked at the method of elimination. Now we can actually apply this method to a system of linear systems that have more than two variables. And actually, if you were to kind of like dig down deep, um, this method of elimination is actually what computers use when they're solving linear systems with several variables. When you use a system of elimination, your ultimate goal is to rewrite the system in a form that you can use back substitution. Um, so you would isolate one variable, you'd back substitute into another equation where you'd find a second variable, and then you'd take that answer and you'd back substitute into a, one of the original equations and it would give you the third variable then. So what we are looking at is a system such as this, and you don't have to write this down right now. Um, I'm going to actually show you how to solve this. But if I give you a system that said something like x minus 2y plus 3z equals 9, negative x plus 3y equals a negative 4, and 2x minus 5y plus 5z equals 17, I'm going to show you here in a few minutes how to work your magic to get the system in what we call the row echelon form, okay, which looks like this. And we're going to end up with something like x minus 2y plus 3z equals 9, y plus 3z equals 5, and z equals 2. So this would be a row echelon form, okay? This is just one example. You may come up with something else that has a different, maybe different equations up here, but the end result of having z equals 2 would be the same. And if you notice here too, we have what we call a stair step pattern. We have a full equation here where x is has a coefficient of 1, then y has a leading coefficient of 1, and it just consists of y's and z's, and z has a coefficient of 1, which we can then back substitute, or take this value, back substitute it into this equation, solve for y here, then take this value of y, this value of z, plug it in here, and then solve for x. When we actually take the step where we're back substituting, this is what we call the Gaussian elimination method. So by looking at example one, we want to solve this system. We have three equations, three unknowns. We don't know x, y, or z. And we're given that x minus 2y plus 3z equals 9, negative x plus 3y equals negative 4, and 2x minus 5y plus 5z equals 17. Now, we can do any number of what we call row operations. And what I mean by that is, I can move this row down to the third, I can move the second one up, I can multiply each row by a, a coefficient, um, whatever I need to do in order to get into that row echelon form. But remember, my ultimate goal is to have a leading coefficient of 1 on this x, have a leading coefficient of y down here, and have a leading coefficient of 1 on this z value down here, and eliminate these values here. Or we want to get that stair step. Um, notation. Now when we do this, I want you, and this is so incredibly important for me to help you out with partial credit and to help you if you make a mistake, you need to label what I'm going to call your row operations. So what you'll notice is in step one, when I rewrite this equation, this right here has a coefficient of one on the x, so I am going to leave that step or that equation just as it is. So when I rewrite this, I end up with this as my first equation. And now I need to come up with a new second and a new third equation. So over here to the side, what I'm going to do is I notice that if I take, and my goal is now is I need to get a equation right here where I have y with a coefficient of 1. So what I need to do is I need to eliminate my x variables. And by looking at these two equations here, I notice that if I add equation 1 to equation 2, I am going to generate a new second equation. So off to the side, I'm going to put that I'm going to go r1 plus r2. And what this means is I have row 1, and maybe let's go like this, r1, this is r2, this is r3 for row 1, row 2, row 3. So when I do this, I end up with x minus 2y plus 3z equals 9. And I'm going to add that to a negative x plus 3y um, and then plus 0z 
equals a negative 4. So now when I add these together, my x's are going to cancel. Negative 2y plus 3y gives me a positive y. 3z plus 0 is plus 3z. And 9 plus a negative 4 gives me 5. This here will become my new second equation. So I'm going to write that in my new second equation spot right here, which is y plus 3z equals 5. Now, I need to come up with a, another equation, and I can't just eliminate two variables in one step, unless I get really lucky with my equations. But typically, it's going to take me a couple steps. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to come up with a, another equation in terms of y's and z's. I want to eliminate the x's so that I can in a step later on down the road, get down to just a z equation. And to do that, I'm going to use my third equation, and I'm going to, I'm going to eliminate my x's. So because I have um, a 2x, and actually we're going to label what we're doing here. So I'm going to take my r3 equation, and I'm going to add it to a negative 2 times r2 because if I multiply this equation here by a negative 2 I'll have a negative 2x and I can add it to a positive 2x and my x's will cancel. So by doing this this gives me 2x minus 5y plus 5z equals 17 and I'm going to add that to this would be r3 my row 1 equation now is going to become a negative 2x plus 4y minus 6z equals a negative 18. And so now when we add these together, our x's are going to cancel. I'm going to have a negative y, a negative z, and a negative 1. So this right here now is my new third equation that I'm going to fill in to my system up here on the left. When we look at this new system that we've generated, we're really close to having it into that row echelon form. I have a coefficient of 1 on my x, I have no x terms here, I have a coefficient of 1 on my y, and the only thing that's keeping me from being in true row echelon form is the fact that I don't have a coefficient of just a 1 on z, and I still have this y term. So this here is now going to become my new system that I'm going to deal with. And again, I'm going to leave equations 1 and 2 alone, and I'm just going to work on getting 3 into the form that I want. So to do this, I'm going to first rewrite what I've already got that's good. And now I have to come up with that new third equation that's going to go here. Well, what I can do is I can add my R2, and this is going to come from this right here as my new R2. This will be my new R3 plus R3. If I add those two together, I can see that I will eliminate my Y value. So I'm going to end up with Y plus 3Z equals 5 negative y minus z equals a negative 1. y's are going to cancel, and I'm left with 2z equals 4, which tells me then that z is equal to 2. So now up here I put z equals 2, and I have solved my system. So by back substitution, to get my actual coordinate point for this solution, I'm going to take this value here, plug it into this, so I know that z is equal to 2, and remember it goes x, y, and z. So now I have y equals 3 times 2, which is 6, equals 5. So let's write this down here, y equals a negative 6 plus 5, which tells me that I have negative 1. And if I plug that into this top equation up here, that gives me x minus 2 times a negative 1 makes that plus 2 plus 3 times 2 or 6 equals 9 
So x equals 2 plus 6, which is 8. If I subtract that over, that tells me x equals 1. And my coordinate point then, and you can double check this graphically or by substituting everything into the original, but your point of intersection for all three of these planes is going to be 1, negative 1, and 2. So again, I want to reiterate, as you do each step, please make sure to show me this R1 and R2 or R3 plus a negative 2 R2 so that I can help you with partial credit as much as possible. Okay, example 2 tells us to solve the system and I have 3x minus 2y plus 4z equals 1. And in this case, what I notice right away is that my second equation is actually got a coefficient of 1 on x. So I would maybe draw an arrow something like this that says r2 is here and this is r1 so that when I rewrite my system, I end up with x plus y minus 2z equals 3. And then I have 3x minus 2y plus 4z equals 1. And I'm just going to leave the third equation where it is. So 2x minus 3y plus 6z equals 8. So now this is my new system that I'm going to be dealing with. And my first equation is fine. I need to work on eliminating that second equation or that second variable of 3x and get a coefficient of 1 on y. So again, what I see is if I do, um, it looks like a negative 3r1 plus r2. And again, now this is my r1, this is my new r2, and this is my new r3. When I add these together, I end up with a negative 3x minus 3y plus 6z equals a negative 9. And I'm going to add that to 3x minus 2y plus 4z equals 1. So my new second equation is going to become my x is canceled, so I have a negative 5y plus 10z equals a negative 8, and this will become my new second equation. So if I rewrite my new system right now, what I've got is x plus y minus 2z equals 3. My new second equation just told me that I got a negative 5y plus 10z minus, equals a negative 8. And even though I don't have a coefficient of 1 on my y term, I can take care of that later. So I'm going to leave it like this for now because I did get rid of my x. And I'm going to have to come up with my new third equation. To do that, I'm going to take 2r2 and subtract 3r3 from that. So now what that's going to give me then, 2 times r2 is going to give me 6x minus 4y plus 8z equals 2. And then when I multiply r3 by um, a negative 3, I end up with a negative 6x plus 9y minus 18z equals a negative 24. So when I add the two of these together, my x's are can going to cancel, and I'm left with 5y minus 10z equals a negative 22, and that's what I'm going to plug in right here. So now I have a new R1, a new R2, and a new R3. And I need to eliminate my y variable out of my third equation. So I'm going to add, because my y coefficients are the same with opposite sides, now I'm going to say R2 plus R3. And this right here is really going to be the R3 from above. 
which is this right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and go um, add my y r2 for, to it. So I have a negative 5y plus 10z equals a negative 8. So when I add these, my y's are going to cancel. My x's are, or z's are also going to cancel, and that's going to leave me with a negative 30. Well, 0 does not equal a negative 30, so what this tells me then is my solution does not exist, or we say that this is an inconsistent system. In other words, there is no solution that will meet or satisfy all three equations. And so now we're done. Now for example three, we're going to solve this system. And as you can see, the first equation already has a coefficient of 1 on the x, so we're going to leave that as it stands. And to come up with my new second equation, I am going to have to multiply my first equation, so I'm going to go by 2, and it's going to have to be a negative 2, so I'm going to go negative 2r1 plus r2, so that gives me a negative 2x minus 4y plus 14z equals a positive 8, and I'm going to add that to 2x plus 3y plus z, and that will give me a positive 5. x's are going to cancel, y's are going to give me a negative y, plus 15z, and that's going to give me a total of 13. This here is my new second. So I'm going to write that over here as negative y, plus 15z, equals 13. Now I need to come up with a new third equation. And to come up with a new third equation, I'm going to take, um, because I have this 3x here, if I multiply the top equation by a negative 3, so I'm going to go negative 3r1 plus r3. And the only reason I do that is because then it, I don't, if I use the middle equation and the third equation, then I'm going to have to multiply both equations by a coefficient, so it just saves me a step. So when I do that, I end up with a negative 3x minus 6y plus 21z equals 12, and I'm going to add that to the r3, which is 3x plus 7y minus 36z equals a negative 25. So now when I add these, my x's cancel. I'm left with a positive y, a negative 15z, and that equals a negative 13. So I'm going to fill that in. This is my new third equation. So now I have a positive y, a negative 15z, and a negative 13. This is the new system I'm dealing with. Again, the first two equations are pretty good, so I'm going to leave those as they stand. And I'm going to try to come up with a new third equation that gets z by itself. So in order to do that, I see from the previous um, system, I'm going to have my r1. r1 is fine. We'll say r2 and R3 are going to allow me to cancel out my Y values. So if I go R2 plus R3, I end up with negative Y plus 15Z equals 13, and Y minus 15Z equals a negative 13. When I add these up, Y's cancel, Z's cancel to give me 0, and 13 minus um, 13 will give me 0. Now this is different than the previous example because this is a true statement. So 0 equals 0, this tells me that I have infinitely many solutions. 
and we actually have to specify what we call a correct form of the solution. We can't just be done at this point. So, in order to find our quote-unquote solution, okay, what we're going to do is we are going to start out, and I think this is the easiest way, there's many ways you can do this, but I think the easiest way to do this is to call z an arbitrary value, which we're going to call a. So now what I have to do is I have to come back up here into this equation and solve, get y by itself and plug in a for every z. So if I have a negative y plus 15, which we're going to call a, equals 13, and I get y by itself, we end up with y equals a negative 15, but, but we're going to have to divide by the negative on the y, so this gives me a positive 15a minus 13. And this right here now is my new y value. So I'm going to say 15a minus 13 for my y value. And then I'm going to have to solve for my x. So to solve for x, I'm going to take both this y value and this z value and plug it into this equation right here. So that's going to give me x plus 2 times my y, which we said was 15a minus 13, minus 7z, which we said was a, and this equals a negative 4. And now we're going to have to get x by itself. So in order to do that, we have x equals 30a minus 26 minus 7a equals a negative 4. And, sorry, this should be a plus here. So now we're going to get x by itself. So x equals a negative 30a plus 26 plus 7a minus 4. Collect your like terms. Negative 30 plus 7 gives you a negative 23a. Negative 20, or I'm sorry, 26 minus 4 gives you plus 22. So this right here is what I'm going to plug in for x. So negative 23a plus 22 now is an arbitrary solution for that system. Now tomorrow we will finish up section 7.3 with another video. It won't be quite as long. And we will talk about square systems and non-square systems. Um, so if you run across a problem that deals with square and non-square systems, um, you can skip that in your homework for today and finish it up. Uh, tomorrow after you, you have watched the part two video. So on that note, please write down any questions that you have and we will go over them in class tomorrow. Thank you and have a good night.